Hey, hi, how's it going? Coming to you, not live, but through the power of the internet and uh, on a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Compared to what we've had last week, it was like 30 degrees. We actually had to come out and cover things up to keep it from getting frostbit. And now it's like 70 degrees out here and nice. And then it's supposed to storm and rain for the next four days. So welcome to Arkansas. That's our weather, especially in the spring. So I decided not to move the little bed on the corner where the muscadine was. Instead, just built another bed, a bigger bed for more strawberries probably not going to start off with a bunch of strawberries because I'm not a I'm not a strawberry you know entrepreneur I just like eating them so until they start growing well we'll probably have a strawberry slash something else bed I don't know what but right now I'm back out here at the muskie dive. And I'm not seeing anything green on it since I moved it out here. So it may die. It may. Uh, I don't know. I'm hoping it don't. Fingers crossed. But, uh, you know, if it does, I'll, I'll, I'll buy a couple more and put out there. Not, not too big of an issue. Better issue is, you know, the, the, the bigger of our two apple trees, that one I said was going to be late, uh, it actually took off this week. Why? I don't know, because it was colder, but it has actually got lots of blooms on it now. It is blooming, blooming really good, greening out a lot better than it was, but we had an accident. Yeah, we had an accident. You know, I told you it was really cold this week, and uh, we had to come out and cover some things up. This is one of them that I covered up and it's pretty tall. So trying to get a sheet, you know, uh, over the top of it and then pull it down and wrap it and tie it up. Yeah, my wife, she broke a limb off of it. And as you can see, it was the limb with the most blooms on it. No, actually, I broke the limb off of it. But that's all I've done. Just, you know, putting a sheet over it and trying to get it covered up to save it. And yeah, I broke it. So the, app, the whole tree may die. I don't know. Uh, I've got to put a little something over the limb here. I don't know if I get that. Yeah, right there is where the limb was. You gotta put something over that to cover that up, keep the bugs out. I thought about trying to graft it. And if the weather was a little nicer, I probably could get away with that. With just some wax and some tape and or some saran wrap and probably graft it and it would probably have lived. But I didn't. Just taking a chance. But the other apple tree The blooms have fell off. I don't know if the frost got it. It was covered too. The blooms are fell off, but uh, it's really green. As you can see here, the blooms have, uh, you know, they, they've yellowed and, yellowed and withered. So I don't know if they've done their thing or if not a good thing. I, I, I'm not sure. So it's a wait and see. And like I said, the other thing we did was uh, built another bed. And uh, I'll show that to you now. And like I say, that's going to be a strawberry slash we don't know what kind of berry. And yes, I know there's grass still in it. 
Here's why. Um, I went and chased down a tiller. I was going to fill the bed with uh, compost and uh, you know topsoil, that kind of stuff. But if you haven't bought any of that stuff at the store in a while, it's not that cheap. It's fine for smaller beds, but not that cheap for bigger beds. And this is a little over eight by eight. And um, and actually, the couple stores we've been to hasn't even they haven't even had compost. They had some stuff called topsoil. And I say stuff called topsoil because it looks more like mulch, has more sticks than dirt in it. Just a heads up, just a warning. And uh, anyway, so we had some peanut holes brought in a year or so ago at my father at my dad's house, and we still had a little bit of that left over. And it makes decent compost, so uh, got a load of that put in here because I was going to try to till it. Went and got a tiller, and uh, yeah. That has sit outside and the little pump up bubble thing. Yeah, it's rotted away, leaking fuel. Uh, the on and off switch got dry rotted and it doesn't work. It's anyway, it wouldn't start. It's got issues. I did pour some brand new fuel in it though to make sure that it wouldn't start. Yeah. So it's got a full tank of new fuel. Won't run. You know how high fuel is right now. Anyway, getting off subject. Uh, I looked out here yesterday before the fence was up and uh, we almost made a trip to uh, KFC. Yep, yep. Because I looked out here and the chicken nuggets were out here scratching and playing around and they scratched all of my topsoil out. I dug most of the grass out. Uh, my wife and my son, we kind of got in there and got most of the grass out. But that got old after a while, so we just decided to cover it up and, right, you know, it'd kill it, maybe. Hopefully it wouldn't come back through there, but, um, yeah. So that grass was covered. That grass was covered up. But the chicken nuggets got in there and uh, scratched it all out and did their thing. So they almost went to KFC, just so you know. And instead we put fence around it. To keep them out so hopefully I, you know i realize it makes for a better picture if you don't have to look through all these fencing and stuff but we actually have free range chickens and they do free range in your food they'll free range everywhere but you know we deal with it they give us eggs and my wife enjoys them so we deal with it and uh, looks like uh, my wife has put a trellis in here so i guess whatever the uh, strawberry slash slash anything is going to be trellised i don't know what she's wanting to put in there but you know whatever she wants to put in there it'll be fine it'll be fine in fact she's out here in the greenhouse right now so we may stop in here and see how things are progressing progressing however you want to say that hey sweetheart how's the hey. how's the greenhouse going it's good i'm potting up marigolds I almost waited too long. They have them out of their seed starter. And now I'm potting them up in little two and a half inch pots. This is too many roots. I should have done it a little bit sooner. But they'll be fine. We'll just pot them up. I'll take my little two and a half inch pot full of topsoil and coconut core and lots of good things and put my dibbler in there drop them down in there make sure all the roots and things are covered don't bury the stem too deep that's all there is to it they'll be going out into the garden before long but yeah it's going good in the greenhouse today what are you doing? I'm just talking to the peoples. Talking to the peoples? Yep. Oh, that's good. Somebody needs to talk to the peoples. Are you working hard today? No. Huh? Not nearly as hard as you have been. Oh, this isn't work. This is fun. Nothing work about this. 
yeah, these are just plain orange marigolds. I'm going to plant them around my tomatoes and squash, different things. And it's uh, a bug. The bugs will go to the marigolds, hopefully, instead of what we, instead of our food. So somebody, you, you had a lot of interest in some kind of tomato plant. What, tell me about it. The orange hat. Yeah. It's a micro dwarf tomato. Uh -huh. It's a Baker Creek tomato seed, meaning if I wanted to save those seeds, um, they'll grow an orange hat tomato. Sometimes when you save seeds, they're not going to grow what you originally had. But Baker Creek seeds will. Let me find you one. Because these little guys, they are tiny. But look at that. They're already trying to... Already trying to bloom. Yeah. Yeah. And it's what... About as long as my middle finger. I'll be darned. So that's more of a uh, like windowsill type tomato maybe? Yeah. Yeah. You can keep these in like a 8 inch pot because they're only going to get about a foot tall um this one i'm going to keep it in this pot if if i can i'll keep an eye on the roots if the roots start coming out the bottom then i'll pot it up into something bigger and they'll do better in the ground most things do but if you just have a balcony or a porch or a, a southern window in your home this is a good tomato for you it's orange colored um a little bigger than a grape tomato and it is supposed to be because i haven't tried it i'm not going to tell you it tastes super good but it is supposed to be super good and fruity sweet my experience with orange tomatoes is the ones i've tried have been sweeter and fruitier than reds so it stays small so you put it in the windowsill uh-huh and you don't have to worry, it don't get so tall that you have to stake it up and mm -hmm. put a cage around it and all that good stuff. I might stake it. And you don't have to walk far right. to get a tomato for your salad. You just like, right. it's in the kitchen growing in the window. Right. You, yeah. So that's perfect. That's the oh, perfect yeah. garden. Yeah, you, you know, you can't, anybody would have space for this tomato. It's, it's. So it's, is it like Tommy Toe size or bigger than Tommy Toe? About like Tommy Toe. About like Tommy Toe. Yeah. And, and you might, from the pictures, it is loaded with fruit. And they say it's very productive. So you might very well have to stake it, but you can use um, a shish kebab steak. Shish kebab steaks are about half this size or a chopstick would be perfect. Just something that you could tie that little guy up to. Right. Put it in next to him and tie him up to because the weight of the fruit could pull him down. Right. Gotcha. So that is a possibility, but you know. But that's good. That's neat that we're doing something new anyway. Oh, I love to. Yeah. I want to try. Especially kind of cool that it's a dwarf, like a little dwarf type. Yeah. 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 I try new tomato species, varieties, sorry, um, every year. I, I enjoy it. That's a. I want gardening to be fun. And to me, it's fun to try new varieties. I always have a standby. I have a Canon tomato that I plant every year. It's disease resistant. But I also have fun stuff. We're trying new peppers and new tomatoes. All kinds of stuff. I'm just trying to cover all them little feeder roots up. I think I'm going to have a lot of uh, marigolds more than I need. But we'll find a spot for them. Might put them in the, put one in each pot with those little orange hat tomatoes. They should get about the same height. These two, my seeds were way too close together. Look at that. Yep. I don't know how delicate marigolds are. I normally don't start them myself. But we're just going to kind of tease them apart. This one may not make it, but I think it will be alright. It looks like you got plenty if that one doesn't. 
it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be fine. And this is the last one. My button up for the day will be done. Well, if you got time and you feel like it, we'll walk around and you can tell folks kind of what's growing. I know everything's not bloomed out yet, but things are starting to green up a little bit. And it's a wonderful, beautiful day. A little windy. Okay. But uh, we can walk around and... I'll help you out. See what we got going. Sometimes I don't know what's a grass from a root, from a flower to... Now, I'm going to shut this side down. There'll be chickens in here. Right. And they will eat all that. Oh, I know. Yep. And if they don't eat, they'll just get in it and waller in it. And oh, they'll eat my seedlings. They, those fresh greens. All right. I mean, you could fly a kite today. Yeah. Where do you want to go first? Mr. Doesn't matter. Okay. Doesn't matter. Um. I mean, I don't really see a reason to go there. I don't see anything coming up yet. I got some time. This is a, a perennial bucket. I can staff shades that are just, just barely keeping out of the ground and creeping time. And of course, a weed. Did you show them the cat mint? No. The first here is the peppermint. And, and I bought it. I, I don't normally buy them, but I did, and some kale. This is cat mint. It's a two-year-old plant, and I like to pinch it back at that bee to uh, make it bushier. That's cat mint. You can make a tea of that. It's good for your digestion. Over here, we got a autumn... I think it's called Autumn Joy Sedum. It comes back every year. There ain't no telling how old that is. And then this one is hyssop. And if you were here and you smelled it, it smells like licorice. It smells really, really good. It looks like something's been eaten on it. Maybe it likes licorice. Yeah. Our gooseberries are really pretty and green. Hopefully we'll get a few of those this year. I put a pot of creeping time on each side of the porch in these turquoise pots. Once it gets big enough, I'll take the chicken wire off because then you don't have to worry about the chickens. Right now, even though it's not something they normally like to eat because it's so strong smelling, they'll pick at it just because it's new and green. Moving into the swamp over here? Moving into the swamp are uh, Asperia's starting to green back out. They like boggy soil. They don't have a problem with it. Our needle point hollies still green. It's doing fine with boggy soils. We're learning what works. Yeah, we got a lot of creeping Jenny. I noticed I planted last year. And it's all coming back and that's good. We want something to stay green in this boggy mud. This is the yellow twig dogwood. It's leafing out. It's known to uh, like boggy soil. Red twig dogwood will too. Our chives. Ornamental chives are coming back. Again, I got to put a fence around them. There's an Easter lily down low coming back. These are our gooseberries, and this is, a, I guess, three years now. And you notice, see these? That's our buds for our gooseberries. That's the first time we've had them. So hopefully, we'll have a few gooseberries. This is our lemon balm. Well, if you had a way you could smell it. smell vision yeah, smell it. It smells, I mean, just like a lemon. Just like you cut a lemon. You 
can make a tea with it too. You can put it in your tea. You can make lemonade, throw these in there. Yeah, don't don't be putting it in my stuff, okay? Alright. This is gonna be a new earth bed. I planted some piss up yesterday. And of course it's got big old elephant garlic in there. And it's got some Dutch irises and agastache. It's what we put in here. The leaves are kind of hiding everything. Stuff just ain't yeah, quite a natural mulch. Yeah, stuff just haven't hasn't quite got up where we want natural it yet. Mulch, the worms like the leaves, and I don't care if they're out here. I'm gonna do this probably like a guerrilla warfare camera man. I'm gonna try not to cut anything. Yeah, this is a I call it spice bush. I don't know the real name for it. What's left of it because uh, my husband weeded it down last year. But it lived, it survived. That's what it did. These are some new new beds that we got last year. Um <laughs> you know, I don't remember what this is. I planted it. I grew it from seed. It looks like a dill pickle. Oh. It don't smell like dill. So I, I don't know. I'll have to plant apple. Because this should be agastache. And it's no good no more. Let's see, it doesn't look like it made it. It didn't make it. And we got room to put something else over here. But I'll figure out what it is. That's a hot mess right there, I think. No, nothing wrong with this at all. This is a mint. Don't remember which one. It smells lovely though. It smells so good. This is uh, Canterbury Bells. I That's prefer. what? Canterbury Bells. Canterbury I, Bells. Yeah, it's a biennial like hollyhocks. It looks like a dandelion. No, no. Yeah, it I looks like a weed. It last year and this year it should bloom it should still send up stalks of really beautiful flowers yeah i bet it sends up some stalks with the little head on it. you can blow it and they fly around no. that's more, a hot mess there's some more of that mint in here and i think these little seedlings are either going to be toothache plant or zinnias Something like that because see how many there is. Oh yeah, a bunch. So either way it goes, I don't care that it self seeds. Put nothing up here but weeds anyway. This right here, more Beats. Canterbury bells. Yeah. But this plant, this is how Tom died. Yeah, that's not. It's a curry plant and it's Mediterranean. Yeah, you can't. I don't think anybody can hear us with these trucks going by. A lot of it died back, but see all the green growth. And I'm tickled because this plant's still alive. Yeah. Look at that. 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 Look so good and since it's mediterranean it lacks you know heat and dry soils but i'm going to take this in the house just because it smells so strong i'm not going to use it for cooking or anything like that i'm just going to have it in there to make the house smell nice that one i shouldn't have pulled off see how it's still green yep and there's what is this? I don't know. Something I planted. And then over there will be canas, but they're not coming out yet. So we're going to get all this filled in with nice fragrant plants. Sure. We want it to smell good when the windows are open. Oops, sorry. This is all a hot mess. These pots and stuff. This is a... Uh, I believe that's dead nettle. It's either dead nettle or henbit. 
either one is a medicinal herb. Most people got it growing in their yard right now because it is wild yep. and everywhere. I think that's some stuff that I always just call water grass. I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to look because I can't remember if it's dead nettle or hembit. Ooh, it's strong. But yep, it's a medicinal plant. Lily the valley, but they're not blooming yet. Lily ain't they're doing nothing. Yeah, Lily ain't doing nothing. Ain't that sad when you plant stuff and you can't remember what they're called? Don't remember. You liked it when you got it, though. Yeah. <laughs> the ground cover. I drained you. I just I think it's gonna do really good this year. Don't never break off your old growth because this will look like dead cane standing up. Like this right here? Yeah, leave it alone. Don't break those off. No. I see how it greened out all the way to the end of it? Yep. Well, you would have lost all that. Here's some seeds. I can take in my greenhouse every year. You know what that is? Comes back every year. They don't usually have this stick in it. That's Lily of the Valley. They smell good. They do smell good. That is Lily of the Valley and uh, we're not, we're really, we're more on a hill, not, not in the valley, but that's what that is. It does grow on the downhill side. What are we gonna look at? You need you might ought to point some stuff out. I, I realize there's not a whole lot growing in the garden right now. Well, do you want to go in there or you want to do it from the outside? Uh, let's go in there, I guess, just because of the chicken wire is hard to film through and Okay. Well you know all that white stuff is bone meal. Yep, bone meal, blood meal, cottonseed meal, just cornmeal. You know, it's just meal. But you can kind of tell me what you're going to plant where and all that maybe. I oh, don't know. Okay. I don't know. Tell me what's here and what's not. All of that green stuff on the ground. Yeah, this stuff. That's all kale. Oh. Collards and kohlrabi. I like how it's not, you know, in a row or anything. Just like throw it out there. Yeah, because it's greens. Yeah, yeah just you cut greens. And you, you cut them and you come back and cut them again. So you don't I don't have no rows. Uh -uh. We probably won't harvest it before I plant but it keeps the ground covered and, and lessens your weed load. True. You don't want bare ground. There's definitely more kale there than I will ever well, eat. Well, all of that green up against that piece of tin uh -huh. is where my husband threw grass seed of some kind. No. Yeah, he does that. No. But w this trellis is going to have indeterminate tomatoes and semi-determinate tomatoes. Um, Chef's Choice Black and a tomato called Perrin. Perrin. Which is a cannon tomato. The Chef's Choice Black is a, is a dark, like it, it reminds me of Cherokee Purple, except the fruit are perfect. Gotcha. And that's what's gonna be on this trellis. Um, might throw some cucumbers in there too. A couple of cucumbers to grow on the arch. Mm -hmm. Now, Which, is, is that over there behind that? Is that garlic? That's elephant garlic. That's what I thought. Yeah, we like garlic. Yeah, and usually elephant garlic's perennial. Comes back year after year. Yeah. It, we we it, got that from a friend of ours, another mm -hmm. YouTuber, Rocky Homestead. Rocky Homestead. Jeffrey, appreciate the garlic. Thank you, sir. What we got behind us here? Tulips. They're still blooming. Still got blooms to go. <laughs> A flower I don't remember the name of. But <laughs> I do that. I got these for like a dollar a pack. These uh, flowers, bulbs. And I planted them for color, but I don't remember what they're called. But they're fixing to open. They're fixing to open up. These tulip blooms have lasted 
over a week now. I like well, we haven't had our granddaughter here since <laughs> last week. That's true. She and definitely likes to pick them. There's some onions that I started from seed also mixed in there. Because when the tulips uh, are done, then the onions can grow onion bulbs. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, these two trellises are going to have... Uh, this one and the one behind yeah, it. Determinant yeah. tomatoes, BHN 589. It's our Canon tomato. It never gets sick and very productive. We'll have it every single year. Okay, what's going in the bed over there? That is a perennial bed of asparagus. There's one over there if you want to break it off and eat it. No. What? No, I don't want to break it off and eat it. If we only got one. One little lonely soldier. Here's one coming up right here. Oh, sure enough. Keep looking. I bet you there's more as pretty as it is. Warmer the weather is, the more asparagus will be popping up. One the other day. It was I good. do like asparagus. I'm not, I wouldn't eat it because I don't like it. I do like it. However, I like for it to be like cooked tender and smothered in butter. Have you had it raw? Uh, I'm pretty sure I've had it like grilled where it tasted raw. <laughs> Crunchy. Yeah. Uh. See this one? It really needs picked. Well, pick it. I'll eat it. All right. Let me have a. Let me have a bite. You don't want to eat the dirty part. Uh, no, I don't want to eat the dirty part. Ain't no fresher. You know what it tastes like? Asparagus. No. No, it really don't. What's it taste like? My mother and her mother, I can remember them planting, uh, I don't know if it was peas. I think it was snap peas because they were snapping them. They'd fresh peas. They would snap fresh peas out of their garden into a big old bowl and they'd have me help them. Of course, I didn't really help them that much. But I would always snap them and I would eat the peas raw. Stick them in my mouth. They, they taste like raw peas. In other words, I don't think this is quite done. <laughs> it's done. No, it tastes just like raw peas. Yeah, fresh asparagus tastes different than cooked asparagus. I can remember them sitting on the porch. Like I said, they were snapping peas and throwing the peas in the little bowl and the big old Tupperware bowl or pan, whatever. And instead of popping the peas out like I was supposed to be doing, I'd reach over and get me a handful of them raw peas and eat them. You liked them. What's where you stepping? What is this down here? That's just a moss because that's the north side of the bed. Oh, I see. And I don't care. It's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty. Let me move over where you can. Yeah, I don't want you stepping on this. This is piss up. This is piss up. It smells like licorice. This right here. See all of them together? Yeah. That of those are volunteer tomatoes. See the skin. It's from a tomato that fell here last year. Well, it does not look like a tomato plant. No, because it's just the it's the starting leaves, the cotyledons or however you say it, the tree leaves. But if I wanted to, because it was an heirloom, I could dig that up and separate them and have that many more tomato plants. But if I remember rightly, it was a black dragon right here. I think that's grass. No. No, it's where a tomato was. No, I think that's just some wild grass. Volunteers. Bro. This is, uh, is warhounds that I tried to pull up and get rid of. She's a what? It's called whorehound. It's a family and it's in the mint family. And this is a, a miniature rose that I popped into the garden. I like roses. Oh, I'm stepping on time. Look at here. That's creeping time. Well, you can cook with that. It's a hot mess. That's what that is right there. Oh, it's not. I wish these leaves wasn't in here. I, I realize you like them for the mulch and all that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. The plant will get bigger and the leaves will just shield its roots. These are hollyhocks. They're a biennial. I planted them from seed last year. Uh -huh. This year, they should get tall. They should get tall and bloom. And I don't know what color they're going to be. Whew. This is clover. 
that my husband was and the seeds got in my garden. Oh, you mean he throwed it a little too close to the garden? Oh yeah, I've been pulling. That has been there a while. Because I've actually pretty close to the garden that isn't even trying to come up. If you garden like I do, the weeds come up pretty easy. Sure. This is I guess cache, but it's not coming back out yet. It's still too cold. All right, we're going to get out of here. This thing's almost over 45 minutes long already. Okay. All right, folks, we're going to have to get out of here. Uh, I'm probably not going to do a lot of editing in this video because I've just continuously let it go on and record and, and get Kim telling you kind of what things are. And we may do one of these again uh, as things get a little older and bigger and greener and all that good stuff. But... Uh, we're going to jump out of here. I apologize for the audio. It's really windy out here. And of course, my microphone's up here. So when she's bending down talking, may not be able to hear some things. But uh, we'll upload it and see how it goes. But until then, we'll catch y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.